So if you take a look at the like global value of the generative AI market, it already stands at like $45 billion and is growing every single year. AI models are on a rampage as every single huge tech company is producing their own AI model with the latest AI models being Gemini 1.5 Pro and OpenAI's GPT-40 then MetaMask's Llama 3.1. These models are crazy powerful with unique features, different capabilities. I wanna break down how they perform in, in benchmarks, their pricing and practical uses. We've done a ton of work using these AI models and if you want, you can just go to rapidinnovation.io, book a call with us if you're planning to work on an AI project in the future, we'd love to help you guys out. Hi, this is Jesse, your favorite host. Let's dive right in. So first, let's talk about these models. Uh, we've got Gemini, or Google's Gemini 1.5 Pro that came out in February 2024. It's basically built to handle really large text inputs, making it great for tasks that need to process like tons of information. This model can handle an input for, of up to like a million tokens, allowing it to process really large documents super easily. It can generate up to 8,192 tokens in a single request. And this makes it perfect for creating really long content like articles, reports, even books. Then you've got GPT-40, which is the newest in the OpenAI's GPT series, which was released in May of this year. This model can already handle an input of 128,000 tokens and can generate up to 2,048 tokens per request. A major plus for GPT-40 is the cost effectiveness. It's basically a lot cheaper than all of the earlier good models like GPT-4, making it accessible to like lots of users that are looking to build stuff. And it's designed to be really efficient and really versatile. It's able to do various large language tasks like translation, summarization, content creation, etc. Next, we've got Meta's open source giant, Llama 3.1, which is the latest model that came out in July of this year. It can handle an input of 128,000 tokens, just like GPT-40. Llama 3.1 comes in different setups, including a 70 billion parameter instruct model, which makes it really efficient for specialized tasks. This model is known for basically its versatility and efficiency, making it suitable for lots of different kinds of applications, but especially those needing a detailed understanding and generation of language. Okay, so now I wanna talk about how these models actually perform uh, across different benchmarks and different factors. So in the MMLU benchmark, which is the massive multitask language understanding benchmark, basically just checks the model's ability to understand and generate language in multiple tasks. GBT 4.0 scores a crazy 88.7% in the five shot setting. This is a lot higher than Gemini's 1.5 Pro, which only scores 81.9, and Llama 3.1, which only scores 83.6. For at least for its 70 billion instruct model. These scores basically just show that GPT-40 generally performs better in language tasks compared to the other two models. Then we've got the MMMU or the Multitask Multimodel Understanding. So the MMMU benchmark tests the model's performance in handling multiple tasks and modalities. Here again we get to see GPT-40 score 69.1 Gemini 1.5 Pro scores 58.5 and then Llama 3.1's performance in this benchmark is not actually available. Um, its specialized models suggest it excels at specific applications that need a deep understanding and language generation. The next thing you've got to take a look at is the price, which is a really, really crucial factor in choosing an AI model, especially for businesses and for researchers. So I want to give you a little bit of a comparison of the pricing for input and output tokens. GPT-40 costs $5 per million tokens. Gemini, Gemini 1.5 Pro costs $7 per million tokens, which basically makes GPT-40 more cost effective for users who need to process large volumes of data um, and I, which basically just aligns with OpenAI's goals as well. Pricing for Llama 3.1 isn't really available, but it is important to consider all of these costs when deciding. 
Then you've got the output token. So for output tokens, GPT-40 costs $15 per million tokens. Compared to Gemini 1.5 Pro's $21 per million tokens. This again basically makes GPT-40 more economical if you're looking to generate large amounts of text. All right, so all these models have strengths and weaknesses. I'm um, starting with uh, Gemini 1.5. The main strength is its ability to handle large inputs and generate really long outputs. This basically just makes it suitable for tasks that need really extensive processing and detailed content generation. However, its higher cost compared to GPT-4.0 might be a limitation for users with budget constraints. Also, while it does really well in lots of benchmarks, it really isn't as versatile as GPT-4.0 in handling like a wide range of tasks. Then GPT-4.0's main strength is really its efficiency and its cost effectiveness. It does really well across benchmarks, making it a reliable choice for tons of different kinds of applications. And it's got a lower cost both for the input and the output tokens, which makes it accessible for users who need to manage costs tightly, startups, things along those lines, the guys that we work with every day. However, its smaller input context window compared to Gemini 1.5 might be a limit on its ability to handle really, really large input texts. Llama 3.1's strength is in its specialized models, which are basically optimized for specific tasks. So this makes it really, really efficient and really, really versatile for targeted applications. However, the lack of detailed pricing information might make it a little bit hard for users to budget for its use. Well, in specific benchmarks, its general performance across many of the tasks probably isn't as high as GPT-40. So then to better understand how these models can actually be applied to real world scenarios, I wanna start looking at some practical examples for each one. So Gemini 1.5 Pro. So think of a publishing company that needs to process or generate large volumes of content. Um, people that are creating synthetic books um, or, or any other really, really large volume of content. Gemini Pro uh, can handle this like really, really easily because it's got that million context window. The company could feed an entire book or a really long report into the model, allowing it to generate summaries, detailed um, analysis, even new content based on that input. The, the, this capability is particularly useful if you're generating really long form articles or detailed reports on specific topics. Um, legal firms could use it. Uh, and to analyze really, really long legal documents, generate concise summaries, detailed insights, maybe doing discovery, um, save tons and tons of time and workload for the legal due diligence teams and professionals that are doing that stuff. And then playing to its strengths, um, a, a large tech company or a tech company could easily use GPT-40 to develop a sophisticated customer service chatbot. So the chatbot, basically could handle customer inquiries, providing detailed answers, um, helping people troubleshoot issues. And the efficiency and the cost effectiveness of GBT 4.0 basically makes it a really, really good choice for this kind of an application. Uh, the, the chatbot could be programmed to understand like a wide range of customer inquiries, generate really, really accurate, useful responses, and even perform tasks like booking appointments, sticking stuff on the calendar, sending emails. Um, at Rapid Innovation, we've actually used it to create a lot of agentic systems that function internally alongside those chatbots. And this can really, really enhance customer satisfaction, reduce the need for human intervention in the routine. And if you start coupling it with a really, really high quality voice, you can almost create that human interaction and then if we're looking at Llama 3.1, educa educational institutions could use Llama 3.1 specialized models to create interactive learning tools. So think about this, like an online education platform grabs Llama 3.1 to develop a virtual tutor that basically provides detailed explanations of complex subjects, um, answers students' questions, offers personalized learning experiences. Researchers could also use Llama 3.1 to analyze like academic papers, generate uh, literature reviews, create detailed summaries of research findings, basically helping researchers understand large volumes of data better. 
And so more specialized tasks with a more specialized goal and output. Google, OpenAI, and Meta are working really hard on improving their models. Basically trying to make them more efficient. They're trying to make them more cost effective. They're trying to make them more versatile and useful in different situations. Future versions of these mo models may offer even larger context windows or better performance benchmarks, more specialized capabilities. Um, I'm really excited to watch as these models evolve because I think they're going to become even more integral to various industries, basically driving innovation and advancing productivity. And I get to talk to people that are coming up with incredibly creative ideas every single day. Some of them absolutely blow my mind. So that's all for today's topic breakdown. What topic do you want me to work on next? Comment down below. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more cutting edge tech content. And we're always here with the latest updates and coolest innovations. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you guys.